Hi, my name is Jerry and I am a twin troller boat owner. Steve from Melbourne, Florida mailed me the video that you will see. This is just the first of several. Steve has owned his twin troller for several years just like I have and he has some great modifications he has made to his twin troller one of which is for a casting platform you have to watch this this was a great idea ladies and gentlemen I give you the elevated casting deck custom made for the twin troller this thing was made for the twin troller and I honestly believe the twin troller was made for it I, I made this thing mainly for better casting angles and uh, flipping and pitching is, is much better. Uh, any, any kind of casting you can think of. Even twitching and working surface walking baits, as many of you know, the lower you can hold your rod tip, the easier it is to work that walking bait. And a little bit later in the video segments, I'm going to be showing you a bunch of actual demonstrations with this casting deck. I want to also show you the beauty of it. No screws of any kind, no fasteners for the twin troller at all. You just build this and it goes right in. It's totally adjustable. You can put it anywhere. And it's, it's really cheap to make. Uh, this material on the top here that I chose is by Sea Deck. Now this stuff is pricey, but uh, a lot of people are going with this instead of carpet. It's totally waterproof, even when it's soaking wet. It's, it's super grippy, and guys, is it ever comfortable. It's nearly a quarter inch thick, and I like to stand on it barefoot. And as you can see, what it does, you have a much bigger, wider footprint to stand than in the floorboard of the boat. Yet, as you can see, it's not overlapping onto the pontoons or the side trays at all. It's out of the way of everything. And it's just as stable as if you were standing in the bottom of the boat. Uh, but what I discovered uh, through fishing this, I've used this perhaps uh, 18 times now. There's so many other benefits that I come to realize as I was using it, other than just standing on it, as you'll see in uh, future demonstrations here as we move along in these segments. Another thing about the uh, casting deck, it doubles your floor space for that amount of floor space, because as you can see, remember what we was talking about earlier, I've got my tackle box under there, and you can put whatever you want under there you know so long as it fits oh by the way you have almost a foot of elevation that may not sound like much guys but trust me the first time you step on this you're gonna feel like you're two feet in the air and for all you safety sallies out there don't even get on me about uh, questioning the safety of this because look at all the high-end bay boats and inshore boats that have polling platforms and sight fishing platforms Depending on the model of boat, some of those are three, even four feet up in the air. Now, I don't hear anyone complaining about those, so don't complain about my platform. We're also going to show you how to make this in a future segment here, so Come stick to around. The segment where I'm going to show you how to build this casting deck. It's simple, guys. All it takes is pressure treated two by eight going to want to cut these 29 and a half inches long when and as you can see these one by fours they're set in just far enough go ahead and go back up front there Chaz and I'm going to set it back down I want to show them something else it's very important I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Uh, maybe from the back here, Chaz. Yeah, here you go. The sun will show it better. Show this end. Get down really low. I'm going to get out of your way. Let it focus. Guys, you cannot use a 2x4 here. It won't fit. It'll come in contact with the, the seat track. 
you want to use one by four and trust me it's strong enough and when you install these one by fours you want to leave just maybe an eighth of an inch of space because wood is constantly moving in uh, various weather you don't want to make those a tight fit up against each side because if you do that one day you might go to put it in and it won't want to go in and you'll have to force it that's not a good thing so keep it within an eighth inch of tolerance also I recommend when you uh, when you cut your one by fours make them a quarter inch less than this overall I'm getting ahead of myself I apologize folks I'm not good at making videos this is my first time ever take a carpenter's pencil or any kind of gauge and make about a quarter inch gap you don't want to put these pieces of wood the two main pieces you don't want to just slap them together again because wood moves and flexes that can cause them to cup or buck or twist so get a nice even gap you can I use two carpenter pencils or you can even break a used one in half that's plenty get yourself a framing square many of you probably already have that stuff or a large speed square and square everything up get your gaps in there this by the way is about 15 and a quarter inches overall that's a lot more than you think it is to stand on trust me I don't care if you've got size 14 shoes that's plenty big enough um, also you can screw these one by fours in but I simply used inch and a quarter galvanized roofing nails four in each two by eight so as you can see there's 16 nails total it's not going anywhere um, you can use white pine yellow pine but you know that's gonna rot sooner or later why not just use the pressure treated spend a couple bucks more another good reason for that is as I mentioned earlier about the safety goggles and the bugs and the twilight hours those bugs as I'm making that long run they just get caked up on everything including the casting deck and when I get down there and the Sun you know I'm starting to get enough light that I can see the bugs are just caked up on this thing I simply pick it up dip half of it in the water and swish it around then I then I dip the other half in and swish it around it takes every bug off uh, before I forget I apologize sea deck if you want to go this route instead of carpet I highly recommend it um, it's it's spelled s-e-a-d-e-k dot com there is no C come to find out their only office their only location is 15 minutes from my house now this stuff is pricey a sheet 38 inches long and it's about that wide I believe I can't remember the exact measurement but it's the closest fit for this platform it was like 47 bucks after tax and everything you can get all kind of different colors and if they don't have this size piece in stock or carry it in stock of the color that you want like they do have camouflage and I think the rep told me over the phone that they could get it for me but it would take two or three weeks I simply didn't want to wait so I went with this color but they do have it this is mocha m-o-c-h-a they also have another color in the correct size for this platform called mica m-i-c-a it's about two shades if that appears to me about two shades lighter than the color of the boat but I thought you know it that's probably going to show dirt even easier so I just went with this slightly darker brown but I think it looks really good with the black paint around the trim and this is so easy to do guys so we'll see you on the water to show you the many benefits of this hey everyone uh, a quick video insert here we forgot to tell you on the underneath edge each edge of the underneath side of the casting deck glue a piece of uh, bicycle inner tube would work best but I didn't have any of that handy so I just used yoga matting that's paint that oversprayed onto it don't use anything thicker than yoga matting though that way your your uh, platform will not slide on the, the plastic boat rails. Also, 
if you weigh say 250 pounds or maybe even more than that if you're worried about the weight load on these 2x8s you can always put an additional 1x4 right in the center also if you look right here I was talking about making these a quarter inch shorter than this overall length the 1x4s the reason being it gives it a reveal you know so when it's flipped over it gives it a more it gives it a more finished look it's not out all the way flush it's like stepped and uh, that's about it oh here's a close-up go ahead and close up on that uh, decking material here you go here's a leftover piece of it get you uh, want to get up real close on that as you can see it's nearly a quarter inch thick and it is mushy but with the weight of your both feet being spread out everywhere, it will not collapse all the way. But it's still rather cushy. It also comes in brushed patterns. And here is the tag. Doggone it, their phone number isn't on there. But look up on their website. They have a phone number. Call them during Eastern time. And they're very helpful. I almost forgot. I want to give you actual demonstrations. I'm not going to be doing any fishing. Uh, we can do that in future videos, but I want to show you the many benefits of this casting deck. It's not just about standing on it and the better fishability. There's so many more things you can uh, get from this casting deck. So we'll see you on the water. Hey folks, back again. We're now on the water. I launched my boat just like any conventional boat. Um, that's really no big deal. We want to save time and get to the important stuff. Now you can see how the boat is rocking a little. It's a little breezy today here on beautiful Lake Washington. This lake is actually part of the St. John's River, the upper St. John's River. All it does is widen into a lake. And there, there's some pretty good bass fishing here, but I much prefer the stick marsh. Now if you would, Chaz, I want you to come right here. Now as you guys can see, I'm going to do this a couple times. Also when I'm actually going to take off in the boat when I untie. But you see how this boat's moving around. This is a floating dock that's very common in the state of Florida. I don't know about where you, some of you may live. Now, you know how hard it is to step down in boats. Look at this, guys. Did you see how easy that is? I am not kidding you. I can do this blindfold. If you've got bad knees and you think you can't use this casting deck, I beg to differ. And this is for the for the reason right here. I'm going to do that again. Look. It's also just as stable as if you were standing down in the boat. You know, I mean, seriously. Because if you think about it, you're not way out on either one of these pontoons. Yet you have a, look how wide. You can't stand that wide down in that floorboard. And like I mentioned earlier, if you go with this sea deck material and barefoot, Remember the old Dr. Scholl's commercial for the, the inserts in your shoes, gelling like a felon? Folks, I am not exaggerating one bit. This is the most comfortable stuff I've ever stood on. And it's more durable than carpet. Because another thing about carpet is if, uh, if you've got a bleeder fish, you know, gut hooked or whatever, you're going to get blood on the carpet. You don't have to worry about it with this material. Just rinse it off. It's gone. See this? Look at this. I can literally step on this boat backwards. I challenge you to do that any other way. Alright, now what I'm going to do, I need to get my boat repositioned here. Because as you can see, show them out there, it's, it's uh, the, the breeze just died down momentarily, but it's, you know, it's moving the boat around quite a bit. Now, for those of you who don't want to use the casting deck, you've got bad knees and you like to sit in your twin troller and use the pedals most of the time, that's not a problem. Once you board the boat, you can take your, scoot your seat back and just uh, fold your seat down and then put your casting deck anywhere back there out of the way. And you're really gonna love how you can beach with this thing too. And guess what, guys? That platform, if, if I scoot it up above those pedals, it does not touch those pedals one bit. 
So what I do, when I'm ready to take off, I just park my truck and do my rope here. Got it all rolled up neat, ready to go. Simply untie. And step on the boat. It's that simple. Exactly how to set up these platforms. Give me just a minute. Let me get this boat in the water underneath so the pedals work good. I'll just spin around. And yes, by the way, but there's enough video. that with any other boat. Look at that. I can bring this thing right up. All right, guys. You see how I got tape right here? You might want to step back this way, Chad. That's just a narrow piece of Gorilla Tape. You can use a black permanent magic marker. What you want to do after you make your platform, set your pedals where you want them. I prefer mine the second notch from the very front position. That allows me room still for my anchor and stuff. And you'll notice how these paddles, they fit right there. They're not in the way at all. They don't interfere with the use of the pedals in forward or reverse. And actually, they stay that way, even in choppy water. So you, you just place your platform in here, get your pedals where you want them, Get your seat exactly comfortable where you want it, and then pull the platform back, and you'll notice, look how much room is behind the back of my legs. I'm not even coming in contact with this. Remember what I said earlier? That this platform was really made for the twin troller, and the twin troller was made for this platform. So you mark that, and then every time you go get on the water and place your platform, you've got the sweet spot. You know right where to put your platform, and then you simply pull your seat up and take off. Now, I want to show you something else. You notice how I scooted my seat back? You can leave your seat like that right there and fish. And if you need to use your pedals, simply sit down and use your pedals, of course. But if you're really on the fish, and you use a stakeout pole like I do, or an anchor if it's in deeper water. Uh, this is what I like to do. I like to fold my seat down, get it out of the way, and you'll notice this seat scoots a lot easier from the tower because these seats are made not to move very easily. That's what you want. And you can step down here when you need to, and what that's good for is landing fish. You're on your platform fishing, but then when you're ready to land a fish, now you can take a knee on this platform. Look, you can do this and you can reach the fish so easily. Hard to moving around here, guys. But look at this. You can actually get down and sit on this thing and land your fish. Stand up. Whip out your hog trough. And here's another benefit of this casting deck. It makes a perfect workstation. You work with your cats, taking pictures, weighing the fish, measuring the fish, whatever. But that's not all. The hog trough fits nice back there too, by the way. Get this, guys. Hear me pull back up a little again. Remember I mentioned workstation? How simple is that? I can take my sweet time doing whatever I want. Guys, the twin troller, especially with this, it's the Cadillac of all small boats. I don't care what anybody says. Why pay $2,500 and up? 
for a kayak that you pedal around when you can have this for about $32.50 with one seat. I, I just don't get it guys, I really don't. Okay, we're going to go to the next scene now where I'm going to show you how to use this platform to beach, you know, on any bank. And it works just as good as what you just witnessed on the dock. So we'll see you on the next Here's scene, another guys. guys. I, I forgot to show you yet one more benefit to the casting deck. See, I'm in position to use my outboard. My handle's on it comfortably. Now, if you would, Chaz, just show right here. Come right on up. As you can see, the casting deck is still in the sweet spot. But look, you, you now have three uh, positions for your feet. The normal position, your feet in the floor. This is my favorite right here. It's a footstool. Yay! You can even put your feet out like this. That's, that's great over long distances with the outboard because, you know, when you sit in one position for a long period of time, even though it's comfortable, the twin troller is a comfortable boat. But you know how it is when you sit for a long period in one position, you start getting a little antsy. Well, this this helps that. You know, you can change your legs around any way you want. The casting this casting deck actually makes your twin troller a true mini bass boat. show you how to beach the twin troller using my casting deck. It's really simple. Now you don't want to be this close to the bank of course, but for demonstration purposes we're going to have to do this. Man, these pedals work so great. I can just maneuver around and show you this. The first thing you want to do, scoot your seat back where you can stand behind it, right? Take your platform and put it right there in the seat. Simple. Whatever you have under the platform, put behind the seat. Now, hang on a minute. We get us back in position here, guys. Now, you could use any rope, but remember, I have my three piece. anchor pole. I like to use just the bottom segment. So I just lay that in your wear. I don't want to get hooked up there. Yeah, let me do it on this side. I ain't got no treble hooks on this side. What you want to do is move your pedals all the way to the rear position of these forward pieces. Get that out of the way. And then you very simply take your casting deck might want to move a rod if it's in the way. Look how easy this is, guys. Super simple. Put it all the way to the front. Remember, you're going to be doing this way out there in the middle of the lake, you know, like 50 to 100 yards away. Tell you what, I'm going to try and back up to you and show you the position of these foot pedals now. Okay. Can you see that? The pedals? The front part of them are actually completely under the platform, yet I can still use them. And in a comfortable position. It's actually about the same position my seat was to begin with. Now let me pull out here and turn around and beach this boat and show you how safe and simple it is. Remember folks, 
I'm doing these demonstrations, it's actually easier than this because I'm having to do this up close to the bank to show you guys. I simply pull up. Now watch. Look at this. Look. Either side, folks. Look at this. Look how simple. I'll do that again. And I didn't even have my boat secure that time. <laughs> again. And if I'm ready to leave, and then you reverse the steps to put everything back the way it was. It's so simple, it's almost stupid. I can't believe no one hasn't invented this casting deck yet. Maybe they have and they just don't make videos. Pull the boat up a little. I shove my stake into the ground. And look at this, guys. I can grab rods. Hey, I found a fishing hole on the other side of the levee. Let's go try it out. That's safe. When you're ready to come back, of course, I was pretending like, you know, there was a fishing hole over there. But when you're ready to leave, simply untie right on your boat. It's a piece of cake. See that? Look, my toes are completely up under this platform. Now when I'm ready, you just simply reverse the procedure. You pick your casting platform up, put it in your seat. Put your pedals back up forward where you normally have them when you're fishing normally. Put your casting deck in the sweet spot. Remember where you marked it? Scoot your seat up where it's comfortable. Take off. Guys, I can't emphasize to you how handy this casting deck is. You've got to try it. I can't imagine fishing in my twin trawler without it now. Now, of course, when I'm shiner fishing, I will be using the 14 gallon live well. This seat with the basket will be in the rear. I've got two seats. It will be only for the uh, outboard motor. My other seat doesn't have a basket under it. That's so the live well can fit under it. The reason I like using both seats is because that way I'm not having to step over that, that live well. It's a pretty good size. It'll hold five fish in tournament fishing too, or a bunch of bait. But I would rather spin in my seat. You know, I turn this seat around backwards when I'm uh, ready to sneak up on them with my pedals, say I'm 100 or 200 yards away from the fishing hole, I don't want a motor in making noise. I want to sneak up on them. So I shut the, the outboard down. I turn the seat around, as you've seen David, the rep, demonstrate many times. Then you just spin around facing forward, and you got your pedals there, and the live well is up under your seat. Now, if I remember correctly, I do this from November through April. I think I have my pedals up all the way. Maybe not, but it doesn't matter. You'll get it. And then I won't need the casting deck for shiner fishing because I'm still fishing when I do that 90% of the time. So, like I said, I won't need the casting deck for that. But here's another bonus, folks. If you use your twin troller with no outboard, and you want to bring along a buddy, and you got the two seats. Two anglers, I've already checked for the space. If you put your pedals up way forward, two, two anglers can actually use two of these. There's plenty of room in the back 
for your partner to fish with this with a second platform and both of you will still have room to stand or sit behind the platform like this you know even the guy in the back will have room to do that now remember the pedals would be up all the way to the forward position so this platform and everything would actually be about this far up that leaves plenty of room to do the same thing in the back of the boat I am offering to anyone that owns a twin trawler or someday when you buy yours to send me pictures and a story about your boat and I will post it here on this channel. There are a couple of things that I need to say about that though. YouTube has restrictions about things that you put on the channel. So please don't send me things that I couldn't post. The email address to send those is twin troller picture at gmail.com. If you like my video, feel free to subscribe. Just push that button in the corner. Or give me a thumbs up. Or Share with your friends. And don't forget to leave some comments or questions on the bottom. Thanks for watching.